Hey guys, welcome back to another Illumisthetic tutorial. This time we're going to cover a highly requested topic that we actually have not covered before. Um, this is going to be our how to do diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is this. It's our, um, anytime you see any of our panels with these white bars or the solid bars, this is how um, we DIY uh, the even lighting effect where you can't see the individual LEDs. Um, this is going to be a one, vi uh, one part video. Uh, we're going to do a pretty simple light which are these uh, EF9 Civic SI uh, corner markers. Um, and we're gonna do these in a uh, solid diffused sequential bar. So you're gonna see how we do it, um, the tools needed, and hopefully with this one video, you kind of get a better idea of the basics between uh, how this DIY is performed on our kits. So let's jump into it and go right into the materials we need. So materials, what do we need? Well, first things first, we need the tail light itself. So this is the tail light we're going to be using. This is an EF9 Civic, uh, oops, wrong side, uh, corner marker. We've already cut this open. If you're interested in how these cut, cut open, we do have a tutorial video in our playlist uh, on Sonic Cutters where I cut this open. Um, I've already done the prep needed, and what is that? Uh, I basically uh, scuffed down and removed all the chrome uh, originally on this light. Uh, reason being is that it is conductive and will cause issues if you don't remove it. Um, it'll short circuit. Um, I went ahead and also painted it black to match the panels. Um, and also removed this orange reflector, cut some stuff and trimmed it. And then the other off, uh, off camera prep I did were these styrene sheets. So if you do order any DIY kit from us that is uh, diffused, we actually do cut you an entire length of styrene. You don't necessarily have to use it um, at all. Um, you don't even have to use the whole thing, um, use part of it, some, so on and so forth. It's there for your convenience. So in this case, what we're doing is you see how there's this big gap here. Um, I'm going to be using LED strips for this, but in order to compensate for this gap, um, I cut and painted a piece of styrene to fit like this so that I can put the LED strips down. Moving on, um, everything else, we're going to cover like what comes in the DIY kit slash components. So, uh, with the styrene, um, obviously you're going to get the panels. Um, and then, in this case, we're just going to get LED strip. This is our Illumisthetic spec uh, LED strip, uh, specifically for automotive use. Uh, what makes this special is that these are actually wired and resistored for 14 volts. Um, so we actually had the manufacturer change the resistor on these um, to be able to handle unregulated voltage from an alternator. Right, so a battery is normally around 11.6 or so, but when the car is on, it can be anywhere from 13.4 to 14.2. So these are wired for 14, and these are still super bright. So even when the car is off, these are still super bright. Um, so it's just one of those things that you don't necessarily need to have a 14 volt LED strip, but we specifically like this for longevity, so that's why we have it. Um, these are available separately as well on our store for um, our non-DIY projects. So your DIY kit will come with this. Finally, uh, we added two or a pair of ZLED sequential modules. These are not sold with the DIY kits. You have to buy these separately, but um, customer slash for this project, we're gonna make it uh, flow from inside to outside and you'll see how it has a nice effect when we turn these into turn signals. Um, as far as stuff that's not included in the kit that you will need to get, um, just general tools. So in this case, for this video, I'm gonna be using a pair of scissors to cut the LED strip wire strippers, and a pair of snips. Uh, and then as far as consumables, we're going to use solder, um, a soldering iron right here. Uh, I think for this project, we're going to stick to 22 gauge stranded. Um, this is typically pretty low power draw, so we only need that. And uh, I like to use this a lot. This is how I affix my panels and affix the uh, the styrene and whatnot. This is black shugu. It's very easy to get, um, easy to remove, works great, uh, weatherproof. This is 20 gauge, oh no, this is 18 gauge copper wire. And then for the fit and finish, we use a combination of foam tape. Um, again, at any hardware store you can get this, um, depending on application. And I use 3M window weld butyl. And this is to help prevent light leak uh, when we affix these panels to the lenses. So without further ado, let's get started. As with all DIY projects, we want to plan ahead a little bit and figure out where we want to do bearings wise. So with this, 
I have these two styrene sheets or one, I'm gonna use one for each side, right? And I've already cut this to size and I'm ready to glue this in. However, I don't wanna just go ahead and glue it either. Um, reason being is because I have this sequential module right here, I need a package. Um, and what I mean by that is when I'm done with this, the wiring would technically need to go in probably something like that. <clears throat> so I need to make sure that however I wire this, it's done in a way that gluing this does not get in my way. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna cut this and trim it to size, make sure it fits correctly. Like so. And let's see, if I put that in there, it's gonna have a lot of wires coming out. So, what I'm probably gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to pre-wire this and then have it come out of this panel before I start doing anything. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna turn on my soldering iron. And I'm going to just pre-measure um, what wires I'm gonna need. So, if I assume that this panel is gonna go here, So I'm, I'm basically, oops, I'm basically guesstimating how long these wires are going to need to be. So from left to right, something like this. And it's always good to just over measure. Um, you would much rather be too long and then snip down to size than too short. So let's start with five wires first. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped steps a little bit. Um, before we do any of that, we should actually figure out how we want it laid out. So with these panels, um, because of the unique way these lights work, um, with the Fusion, you need at least about a uh, quarter inch or so of spacing um, between the LED and the panel. So in this case, while we normally like to try to mount the panel like this, that simply isn't going to work in this case because there's not enough depth um, for the LED strip to shine. So this is one of the few times where we actually mount the panel to the lens area like this. And because of that, we can use this as our backing plate for mounting the LEDs. So we're going to take our trusty silver Sharpie. lay this out and kind of figure out how many uh, LED strips we're gonna put in. So I'm thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna do about seven uh, sections. And what's gonna happen is my LED strip, you can notice here, I can cut every three um, where you see these copper. Oops. This. And in, the, in, in a way to make it kind of a little more elegant and package nicer, I'm actually gonna put these in kind of diagonally, kind of like this. That way uh, I have enough space to put everything in and, uh, and it looks nice. So I'm gonna go ahead just start mocking this up, see how I like this. To see this is the driver's side. So do I like it like this or like it like this? Let's do it this way. Okay. 
So these do have double-sided tape on the back of them. And I'm going to put my first strip down just to kind of indicate where I'm going to start. Just like that. Cool. So now you're going to notice that the LED strips have a positive and a negative side. Um, in order to make wiring a little easier, you're basically going to inverse them every single time. So it's going to be positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. Um, these LED strips are already wired in series of three through the PCB inside the LED strip. So every single time you connect it, you're connecting it in parallel. So I am going to put the next one here. Next one here, and it's a good idea to just spend a little time to make sure it's like evenly lit. Um, it doesn't take too long and has a really nice effect. And remember, while I'm doing this, I'm checking the orientation of my LED strips to make sure that it's uh, inverted correctly. Don't worry about getting the LED strips affixed like securely because you're going to do that uh, before we seal everything up. Also, uh, another thing to keep in mind is uh, keeping note of how sequential is going to affect the way you wire this. Um, I already pre-planned out my groupings, so I'm actually going to wire um, every two LEDs together as my group. And I'm, I'm going to factor that into um, how that ties into my ZLEDs module. So, what I mean by that is my ZLED module is power switched, right? So every two LEDs is going to be one pixel on this module, um, which works out great for the way I'm wiring these. And hopefully you'll be able to see why once I'm done putting these LED strips down. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done was I placed the styrene panel out and I mapped out how I wanted the LED strips to be. Because this is sequential, I actually uh, have all my, I want every single sequential pixel to be every two rows of LEDs. So we're gonna do section one, section two, section three, section four, section five, section six, section, five, section, six, section seven. With the ZLEDs module, packaging wise, I realized this will actually fit through the hole here. So I don't actually need to worry about reverse engineering or whatnot, I can just wire this from the outside first. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so, also the other thing is um, pay attention to how you orient these LED strips. One side is positive, one side is negative. Um, you can't see it on the camera, but what I've actually done was I did positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So basically, every single uh, section um, faces the same way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to universally connect the entire uh, ground area here with one copper wire uh, because this is the ZLEDs module which is power switched 
And then I'm gonna connect the 12 volts with each other individually uh, so that I can uh, hook them up to the sequential module. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, and I'll give, show you a quick example and then I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest. So I'm gonna start off by carefully tinning each copper pad on the LED strip. to prepare it for the copper wire. Cool. So now that's done, I'm going to measure the length of the copper wire that I need. And feel free to overestimate here, or you can always cut it down to size. So right around there, cut it right here. And now this is kind of the important part. You're going to very carefully solder this wire onto the section of each piece of LED strip. Um, pay attention to accidentally, to make sure you don't accidentally also short it to the 12 volt pad. Um, if you need to, you can actually cut those corners off. Um, just make sure you don't cut it too far down. For this case, I'm gonna to try to just avoid it. And then if I need to, I will go ahead and peel it off and cut them off at a later time. So I'm gonna go ahead. Okay. And while you're doing this, make sure you don't pry too much at the copper wire, because um, you, you can run the risk of ripping the copper leads off. So don't do that either. Now that we have the ground wire hooked up all the way, um, it's a good process or good, good, good practice to uh, test to make sure everything's working. So what I do is I have my power supply here. I'm going to hook up the ground and I'm going to probe uh, the positive of each strip just to make sure it works. So like that. Because sometimes um, you'll end up getting bad LEDs or you might burn one out from soldering. So it's always just a good practice to test it. So now we know those are good. So we're gonna go ahead, pull that off and move on to the next step. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing for the power wires, except this time we're actually going to stop um, between every two LED strips um, because we don't wanna connect everything at once. We wanna separate it into seven distinct sections. So what I'm gonna do here is actually, I'm gonna keep it on the rail. I've already pre-tinned uh, my, my pins, just like on the other side. And I'll try to get a little tricky here. What I'm gonna do is I am going to solder. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. This to here. that to there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and snip. Like that. And I'm gonna basically repeat this process all the way through. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So now, now that I have these copper wires soldered in, so you see um, every section of two, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and essentially connect the board wires to them. Um, I have seven pieces of length specific cut wire and what this is going to be able to do is I'm going to solder it to here and it's going to basically channel from here all the way through up to here. I'm going to try to keep it out of the way of the LED strip so it doesn't block it 
But what you're gonna basically have is from here, through this hole, and then out the back. And you should measure it so that you have enough, enough extra length to do the tucking you need to do. So like this, as well as solder it in, because this will eventually go in back, but you do want to have extra length. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire strippers, strip the wire. I'm going to strip both ends to make my life easier. However, I'm only going to tin one end. I'm going to tin this end. Nice and tinned. And right here, you're going to see that I've already tinned, I've already tinned the, the middle of this copper wire. So, oh. I'm going to go ahead really quickly, solder this onto here. Try to not mess everything else up in the process. So you might need a friend for this part. Hold wires down. Sorry, this. Probably be a good idea to add more solder. Okay. I'm good there. This wire will then get routed like so through here. Out the back. And this is going to be channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in channel seven on my board. Um, typically, you don't wanna do it in this order. You wanna do all the wires first. Um, but for the sake of showing you, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So counting from right to left on this board, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna put it on hole seven right here. Put it through my hole, fold it over so it stays in there. And go ahead and solder it. That is pin seven in. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and repeat that for the remaining six. And then we'll link back up. So now that I have the wiring done, like this, um, you can see one, two, three to seven, ground goes through my board. I'm gonna go ahead and test this one more time to make sure it works. Um, I've already calibrated the speed, um, and speed is just however fast you want it to be. So I have it on the power supply again. Let's get this out of the way, and you can see that this is now operating at the speed I would like it to be. So now that I know that it's good and everything works, I'm gonna go ahead and get my clear shugu, and I'm basically gonna use it to secure all the wiring and electrical um, that I have on here, just to hold down the wires. The reason why it's clear is that way I don't have to worry about the shugu covering the LEDs and blocking light. Um, that way it actually you know travels through it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just take my hand, dip it in shugu, and anywhere that has just like a wire connection, um, I'm just going to spread it over. So it will look a little messy, but this is one of those things where um, a little bit of prep work goes a long way in making sure these stay, stay together. So another thing you're going to want to put shugu over is over your copper wire connections. 
Uh, reason being is because any kind of flex, just, just through temperature or otherwise, um, is going to cause these panels to warp and you don't want the solder joints to break off the break off the copper uh, copper plating. And the reason why I'm using a liberal amount is not only does this double double as an adhesive to hold the copper wire down, um, it's also doubling up as another adhesive that helps uh, keep the LED strip down because over time and usage, um, these LED strips obviously aren't gonna stay on. So I'm just, I'm not putting too much, just a little bit is enough. And I'm just swiping over the LEDs just to uh, make sure um, there's shugu touching it and holding it down onto the back housing. So just going through it. Definitely be very liberal with it. Um, there's no real downside to having too much. Obviously, it just does get the more you put, the more messy it gets to clean up. If you ever do need to take these apart, um, so I mean, just keep that in mind. Another thing I'm doing is I'm also hitting these wires. Um, I'm just hitting these wires in a couple areas so that again they stay bundled up and out of the way of the tail light. So I'm going to push these down. Like that. And another thing I'm going to do is I have this butyl tape. The butyl tape is going to be good. And if I um, if I need to wipe off the shoe glue from my hands, I can just rub it off like that. So it makes it really easy to clean up and get off your hands. Put this off the table. And another thing uh, butyl is good for is I can use the butyl tape to hold my wires down. So it's a good intermediate. Oh, it's a little messy. So actually, you know what? I'm gonna use it for here to make sure that my panel's holding. Oh, and my hand's really dirty. So. For butyl tape, um, if it does get on your hands, WD-40 does get it off, um, but it also see it comes off with shugu. So, I'm gonna let this sit for a little bit um, and address any other areas I need to address. Um, looks like I need to add a little more shugu right there. And then of course I'm gonna add shugu to the styrene panel as well to make sure it stays in place. However, if you've been wiping off shugu everywhere well, liberally, you've probably already put enough to get that panel to sit in place. Now that I'm done with that, I am going to get some double-sided tape I'm gonna put it back on the back of this LEDs module like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the inside bottom panel of this light. So I'm gonna get these wires tucked back through this housing right here. And then with my finger, should be able to press down on the panel. Just like that. I have it secured and now I have these two wires coming out, which is perfect. Um, if you want to, after this step, you can also apply a little bit of shugu 
to the side of the ZLEDs panel. Um, and what I'll do is I'll droop off to the side and kind of just add a reinforcement to that double-sided tape. Okay, so after all that's done, you're gonna let it sit for an hour, but before you let it sit to cure, um, always a good idea to just constantly check your tail lights, make sure none of what you did caused a short, none of what you did caused issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Cool. So it looks like we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and put this aside and let this cure. And we'll move on to the actual panel secure. So now that all the shoe goo is dried, we're going to do the next step. <laughs> so this is where the butyl tape and the foam uh, is going to come in handy. So remember, at the beginning, we needed this foam. So what I've done here is I've cut even strips of foam and place them all around the outside edge of my LED array. So I've created like a kind of like a, uh, um, a light, light wall per se. And what you're gonna see it does is it actually helps light from escaping out the sides. So here's my panel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this over the edge, like so. Make sure it's covered, make sure all the foam is underneath. And what you're going to see is when I turn it on, it gives me a really nice pattern and I don't have a lot of light leaking out the sides. So it'll be a little bit like out here and that's what the beetle is for, right? But this is a very nice and clean, easy way to uh, get the light to show up evenly um, and not leak out the sides. So now what I'm going to do is, since I have this foam ready, I'm going to now basically do what I need to do to get this panel on and secured and basically have everything kind of fixed in place. So I have these two clamps. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, shugu to hold this foam in place. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my clear shugu again. To add this, um, to, to put this foam in place, so I'm going to put on the corners and whatnot. I'm just going to spread it around the edges, like so. Again, this is just to reinforce the factory adhesive that's on the foam to make sure that it doesn't um, fall off during its service life. So I have shugu all over this foam now, and this is the part that gets a little tricky, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put my panel over the foam. I'm gonna mate it with the shugu. Make sure the foam is tucked underneath. And once I have it generally in the right spot, I'm gonna take my two clamps and just lightly clamp it into place. Now don't worry too much about how clean it looks right now um, because once the shugu is dried, it's very easy to uh, cut and rip off um, if you have a lot of overspray if it looks really bad. Conversely, if you really do wanna put, put the time in, um, shugu does rub off while it's still uh, curing. Um, so you can just rub it off the same way you rub it off your hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And the same thing on this side. Okay. It'd be better to do it 
this. Just got you guys can see what's going on. And this will all get cleaned up and trimmed later. Uh, the foam can easily be trimmed with a knife. For now, we're just trying to get the functionality of it. So now would be a good time to just go through, um, get the foam tucked in nicely. Um, like that. If you need to make minor adjustments, go ahead and do that. And we're gonna go ahead and test this one more time to make sure everything's still good. Cool, looks like it. So this more or less concludes the core, quote unquote, hard part um, with the assembly process for this light. Once this is cured, we're gonna go over it, um, seal whatever light leak still is remaining, clean up the foam a little bit, make it look nicer, and then we're gonna put this lens back on and have a completed light.